Hey, I'm Charlie Thompson, and this is the Lab 1 Latitude Longitude Time Zones Too Long Didn't Read Intro Video. So for each lab, I'm going to do an intro video that covers the basics, like what's the point? What are we doing? What, <laughs> what are you trying to teach us? So that once you start diving in, you've got an idea what's going on. So this lab, you might have guessed from the title, is all about latitude, longitude, and time zones, which are just different ways of dividing up Earth to measure it or to study it. So I found this on the internet, and I thought it was useful because I don't know what your background in, is in science. I've had students in the past say that they're anxious about science or they don't like science, and science, is, science for some people is frightening, it's different. So I wanted to talk about the idea that that struggle is okay. That if you're not grasping it all instantly, that's okay. That that doesn't mean that you're not going to get it. It doesn't mean that you're not smart. It doesn't mean that you're a good student. It just means probably that it's new. Almost everything we're going to do in this class is going to be brand new to you. So I don't have any expectations that you are experts in this. I don't have any expectations that you are trained in this, that you have any background in anything that we're going to do all semester. So I'm just assuming that you're starting from zero. And at beginning, at the beginning, everyone seems like they're a genius. And that can be really overwhelming, especially if you've got, although we're not going to be in person, especially if you have a student who's who is a geography major or has done these things before, you could look at them and go, wow, they really know what they're doing. I feel so stupid. But no, it's just new. Step two, a lot of people stop here struggling with a certain concept so much you wonder if you should keep trying. The answer is yes. Uh, come to the to one of the Zoom sessions. Send me a text, send me an email, give me a call. We can talk about it on the phone if you don't want to use Zoom. If you're comfortable with Zoom, I can probably explain just about anything you're having problems with in about five minutes. So continue. Don't give up. Suddenly it clicks. That's generally what happens after the struggle. The key is asking for help before you feel that you're really struggling. So I've made videos for each of the labs. Uh, every lab is going to have at least one video. And in that video, I try to go over what the concepts are for this lab. Maybe you haven't had geography in a couple of years because you have to take the lab after you take the lecture class, but it doesn't have to be the next semester. It could be years. So, or maybe you've got another instructor and you haven't gone over this. So the beginning of the video is going to tell you information about the concept and the bulk of the video is really more step by step how to do the things I'm asking you to do. So really, I think the most important resource for you this semester is probably going to be the videos. After that, maybe the Zoom calls. And after that, actually reading through all of the material that I've put on Canvas. Uh, everything that's on Canvas, I put there and I put it there for a reason. And I only put the things that I think are useful. I promise you, I will never give you busy work. And I will never give you things just because I think it, well, uh, yeah, I'm never going to give you busy work. If I'm, if... I've written something and put it on Canvas. It's because I think you'll find it helpful. And then eventually, uh, after you don't give up and it clicks, then you feel like your brain might explode. You find what excites and motivates you. Step six, some of you hopefully have gotten here realizing you'll never know everything and even your professors are unsure sometimes. That's a great place to be. But I wanted to start the semester by letting you know, number one, I don't expect you to know any of this. And number two, it's okay to struggle. Well, it's okay to work at it. If you feel like you're struggling, you should really get in touch with me and let's talk about it. But feeling like it takes work, that's okay. School is filled with work. All right, back to this particular lab though. So we'll talk about earth locations. Uh, we're not going to actually go over, well, North Pole, Equator. We'll talk about that with latitude, longitude. We are one of three countries that don't use the metric system. We will be using the metric system this semester. We'll talk about rays of the sun later on. So this lab is about latitude and longitude and time zones. So latitude goes north and south, or rather the lines of latitude run east, west, east, west, and we use those to measure how far north or how far south something is. Longitude 
like this is the prime meridian. That is a meridian. It is a line of longitude. We use those, although they run north-south, we use those to measure west and east. Like this line is every point that is 30 degrees west of the prime meridian. And every, every point on this line is 60 degrees east of the prime meridian. So lines of latitude are used to measure north and south. Lines of longitude are used to measure east and west. So latitude degrees north and south of the equator. The lines of latitude are called parallels. Uh, it's an angular measurement. It's how far, like if you picked a spot and you had a protractor at the center of the earth, like for example, that spot would be 49 degrees above the equator. And if you connect all the dots, they're 49 degrees above the equator. That would be the 49th parallel. That would be 49 degrees north. The lines of latitude are called parallels. They are all parallel and they get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to the North Pole, which is just a dot. The South Pole is just a dot. So that's latitude. Latitude goes from the equator at zero degrees up to the North Pole at 90 degrees north and the South Pole at 90 degrees south. So latitude only goes from zero to 90 degrees north or zero to 90 degrees south. Longitude is how we measure degrees east or west of the prime meridian. The lines of longitude are called meridians. They are also, just like latitude, an angular distance. So if you measured from the center of the earth, if there was a point here, and you measured it and it was 60 degrees away from the prime meridian, that would be 60 degrees east. They'll notice that the lines of longitude, the meridians, all converge at the north and south pole. They are all the same length, and they're meridians. The meridians go from zero degrees with the prime meridian up to 180 degrees west, zero to 180 degrees east. We'll also talk about time zones. So one of the important things is Earth rotates through 15 degrees in one hour. Uh, which is how wide a time zone is. The 24 time zones are each 15 degrees wide. They zigzag to avoid states. That's eh, a clock. I love this clock. This was one of the devices used to measure longitude early on in the longer video. I talk a lot about John Harrison and his chronometer and how cool it was back in the late 18, uh, late 1700s. When you're giving a location, you give the latitude first and then the longitude. So for example, this red dot is at 48 degrees north, 60 degrees east. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 48 degrees north, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees east. When you give latitude and longitude, it's always latitude followed by longitude. Oh, yeah, this is this is the location of zero, zero. And zero, zero is funny because cartographers refer to it as null island. Null means nothing or zero. So I had a funny experience this summer. I was looking for a car and using the location search, I realized that there was a whole bunch of cars that were like a third of the way around the world from me. And I realized, oh, Whoever designed that form, so let me go to the next page, whoever went to that form didn't, didn't create the form correctly. So if you leave the address or the zip code or the latitude and longitude blank, that's no data. No data means that there's no data. If there's a zero in there, that's data. So a lot of web forms have poorly configured data so that if you don't enter the latitude, longitude, if you don't add, enter the address, when that form gets slurped into the system, the address is given as zero, zero. And so often when you get a data set from somebody and you have to go through and clean it up, a computerized data set for making a computerized map, you'll have to go through and clean it up and make sure that there aren't aren't locations that, you know, are someplace, let's say you're studying monarch butterflies as they migrate from Mexico into the U.S. and back to Mexico. So you'd have to look through your data set just to make sure that nobody, 
nobody incorrectly tagged anything and you don't have monarch butterflies at circling Null Island, uh, just off the coast of Africa at zero degrees latitude, zero degrees longitude. Yeah. In data sets, there's often a lot of, a lot of stragglers that get caught at zero, zero. This is the geographic grid. These lines that run east-west are lines of latitude. These are lines of longitude. Because of the projection, it doesn't look like all these lines converge, but they all indeed, all of the lines, the vertical lines converge at the North Pole and the South Pole. This projection distorts grotesquely the areas as you get towards the poles. But lines of longitude, we use those to measure east and west. And then lines of latitude, we use those to measure north and south. So this is a 15 degree grid, 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and then degrees of longitude, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. We are about 120 degrees west. So our latitude is 40 degrees north, about, and our longitude is about 120 degrees west. The vertical line that runs through the California-Nevada border is right at the 120th meridian west. So 120 degrees west is the California-Nevada border for that vertical part. There are some special lines of latitude. The equator is one. The Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Between those, you get direct sunlight at least during some of the year. So these are the only, the only region of the world that gets direct sunlight. Everybody else gets sunlight at lower than a 90 degree angle during the year. Above the Arctic Circle, from the Arctic Circle to the North Pole, and from the Antarctic Circle to the South Pole, those locations in the summer get 24 hours of light, and in the winter, they get zero hours of light. So that's what the Antarctic Circle and Arctic Circles represent. That's the region on Earth that goes from 24 hours of light to 24 hours of dark, and the region in between the tropics uh, is the region on the planet that gets sunlight at least on one day of the year. In most locations, it's two days because the sun goes up or appears to go up and appears to come down. So they'll have two days with direct sunlight. And it turns out that's pretty important. Right under the equator is where the world's tropical rainforests are in Indonesia, in Africa, in South America. The tropics, the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn, is where the world's deserts are. The Atacama, the American Southwest, the Sahara, the skeleton coast of Namibia, the Kalahari Desert, most of Australia. So if you're under the tropics, you're a desert. If you're under the equator, you're probably a rainforest. There's regions. The, these zones have names, equatorial, subtropical, mid-latitude, subarctic, and arctic. I'm not going to test you on them for this class, but in lecture, they're important because later we'll talk about mid-latitude storms versus tropical storms. Later, we'll talk about arctic and subarctic things. Another diagram showing the same thing. And then time zones. So I mentioned time zones. Each time zone is one hour wide. Each time zone on paper Theoretically, a perfect time zone is exactly 15 degrees wide, but you can see they're summer wider. Some move around states, some move around countries. This is an old map of one of the first ideas for time zones. It goes back to trains that uh, every city just used to have their own local time zone back in the you know, 17, 1800s. It didn't matter because you weren't talking with anybody anyplace else. They didn't have phones, so it didn't matter until we had the railroad. So going from San Francisco to Denver or Denver to San Francisco, you need to coordinate what time the train is going to be, for example, leaving the station in Denver so that you don't have trains on local time colliding on the tracks. The reason we have time zones is because of the transcontinental railroad. Before that, we didn't need time zones. Now we need time zones. You can see that these time zones, uh, let's go to the next one earlier, later. This is a CIA map of time zones. This is the map out of the book, and it's showing if it's noon on, in mountain time. Here it's later, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5, 6, 7. Here's the prime meridian. And then earlier, going this way, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock. This is the international dateline. On this side, it's today. On that side, it's tomorrow. 
today, tomorrow, or today and yesterday. That's even more confusing. Time zones, time zones, time zones in the United States. You can see like this one just loops around that weird bit of Oregon and the cuts off the top of Idaho. That's just weird. I don't get that. Why, why would you not just use the whole state for the time zone? And this slide is showing the central meridians for each time zone. I mentioned that each time zone is 15 degrees wide because Earth rotates through uh, 15 degrees in one hour. You know, Earth is a sphere, so a circle has 360 degrees. 360 divided by 24 is 15. So a circle of 360 degrees divided by 24 hours means Earth rotates through 15 degrees in an hour. And each time zone has a central meridian. So the Pacific time zone, the central meridian is at 120 degrees. So it extends seven and a half degrees to the west and seven and a half degrees to the east, or a perfect time zone would. Which means that you could be seven and a half minutes off, which is half an hour, right? Like if you were right here, in fact, if you were right here, you would be half an hour off from the sun. So if you had a sundial, your sundial, because you're at the edge of the Pacific time zone, uh, and it would be noon, the sun would be directly overhead at noon here, but it, it hasn't actually risen to noon. So the sun would always be early. Late, the sun wouldn't be high enough at noon. It would still be morning when your watch said it was noon. Uh, the important thing, time zones are 15 degrees wide. They are controlled by a controlling or standard meridian that runs through the center. And the time zone extends seven and a half degrees on either side. So seven and a half degrees plus seven and a half degrees is 15 degrees wide uh, for that time zone. The International Dateline, I mentioned this, it's today on this side, it's tomorrow on that side. When you cross over the International Dateline, you either add a day or subtract a day. The time stays the same. If you move across a time zone, then the time changes. When you move across the Dateline, just the date changes. And I think that's everything I wanted to go over for this lab. Yeah, Earth rotates through 316 degrees in 24 hours or 15 degrees every hour. Yeah, that's fine. That's good enough for today. Uh, this is, again, just the too long, didn't read video. Please watch the full Lab 1 video to get the background and also the tips about what you need to know in order to successfully complete the lab. That's it. I wish you great luck.